and welcome to GC Conversations, a show where each week we bring in faculty, staff, alumni, and friends. And we talk all things Georgia College in this community. Today we're joined by uh, Dave Terrell, the director of our Wellness and Recreation Center. Dave, thanks for being here. My pleasure, Wendell. Yeah, good to have you. I, I, they, they didn't see it off camera, but you also, speaking of wellness, you just had a little knee surgery, I believe. I did, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's a slow rehab process. Okay. All right. <laughs> but it's going to get better. All right. Well, good, good. So, uh, well, the first segment I always ask everybody to maybe give a little bit of background about themselves. And first of all, how long have you been here at Georgia College? Been at Georgia College five years. Okay. Um, Born and raised in South Louisiana, went to oh. University of Southwestern Louisiana, which is now University of Louisiana at Lafayette. Okay. Raging Cages. Raging Cages. As an athletic I believe. director, That's right. I'm sure you're familiar with, with, with them. <laughs> Us old alumni hate the name. They call it Ooh La La. Now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but when I was there, it was Southwestern Louisiana. Okay. A uh, really good school, and then did a, got a couple of graduate degrees at Peabody College, which is now part of Vanderbilt. So okay. I enjoyed uh, Nashville for several years. All right. And most of my career been in wellness, uh, okay. primarily hospital-based wellness, and now University Wellness Center for the past uh, five years, and I've uh, been doing this for 30-some-odd years. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, good. Well, that's a, to me, that's a great profession because, as a general rule of thumb, you're, you're helping people be their best, right. you know, and that right. to me that that's a lot of excitement. In that and and you also get to see firsthand people, uh, uh, you know, maybe go from point A to point B, and, and they didn't realize they could get there. It's got to be very rewarding. Yeah, it is, and it's an educational process to yeah. try to motivate people and give them the some guidance to to take better care of themselves and improve their health through a healthier lifestyle. You know, we uh, we term this uh, uh, the wellness, you know, the concept. Uh, uh, we, we used to be, uh, when you go to the doctor, you, you go to the doctor because you're sick. Now, uh, certainly over the last 20 to 30 years, preventative maintenance has been the issue. And wellness, the term mm -hmm. wellness, as we talk about wellness, and I used to teach this, so I, I, I'm really fascinated with this subject, but uh, it's not just going out because you can run 10 miles. Right. That's not just what wellness is. Maybe just kind of give us a, a, a big overview of, of just the wellness picture, about how we need to be well everywhere. Yeah, there are different components of wellness. There's emotional wellness, spiritual wellness, uh, certainly physical wellness, where nutrition and physical right. activity come in. Uh, trying to uh, avoid the overuse of certain substances that are harmful to right. us. Um, just good communication skills and, right. and, and social wellness. Uh, just being conscious of our environment. Environmental wellness is a, is a component. Uh, environmental sensitivity yeah. uh, and that the recycling in Georgia College is certainly with the green movement and our new wellness center is a LEED certified building right. certainly consistent with the with, with the green environmentally friendly and, I, and I'm glad you touched on all those things that, uh, in fact I feel like you just taught my class I used to teach all the time because there's social wellness uh, emotional wellness physical wellness all these different aspects you know when I uh, when I uh, was in coaching I would move into a university and I'd have uh, uh, 15 uh, student athletes, I had built-in wellness. I had a, mm -hmm. I had a coach, a coaching staff, and a, and a group to work with. You had a built-in social wellness when you moved to a new community right. uh, that I think a lot of times people overlook, but uh, I'm so glad that that's part of the conscious of, of, uh, of, of wellness. And and, uh, and again, not just that people think wellness, they think, well, I'm in good shape because I can go out and run, you know, for an hour without getting tired or whatever, right. but it's certainly right. more than that. Yeah, and it's being aware of, of, of our body and our body chemistry, for yeah. example, uh, Heart disease is the number one killer in this country. It's preventable to a large degree, right. or at least the, we can delay the early onset of right. those types of things. The major risk factors of, uh, of heart disease are high blood pressure, high cholesterol, cigarette smoking, and physical inactivity. Yeah. And all of those are dictated by our lifestyle. We right. choose to smoke a cigarette. We you know, determine what kind of foods we're going to eat. If we eat high-fat foods, or our right. cholesterol is going to be higher, again, uh, you know, we can control our blood pressure yeah. to some degree, and certainly physical activity. Uh, inactivity is now considered one of the major risk factors of heart disease. So it's, it's preventable. Uh, those are the things that we're trying to do, preventive medicine and, and being aware of what risk factors you have. I always say with all those risk factors, the only ones you can't change is who your parents are. That's it. You know? That's right. <laughs> but basically everything else in there, we choose. We can modify you know? That's right. We have choices. We make daily <laughs> conscious decisions That's about, exactly about right. each of those things. That's exactly right. right. That's why... Part of my, uh, uh, I'm, I'm on an anti-caffeine deal right now, so I'm not drinking coffee right now. So that's uh, that's yeah. part of my little wellness thing inside right good. now. Good, so. <laughs> very good, good. And even for our students, it's important. You know, they're not concerned about heart disease at 20 right. years old. Absolutely. But, but they need to be thinking about that, that uh, that these risk factors start early, yeah. you know, and it, it could affect your 
your life 10, 15, 30, 40 yeah. years from now. So everybody needs to be conscious of that, not just folks that are right. not college students. Exactly. Age. You know, I think my generation probably grew up more playing outside uh, because we didn't have the video games, that type of thing. So I'm fortunate that basically from zero to 18, we played all day. Right. So I had this active lifestyle. But certainly, as, as, as technology has improved, a lot of those active lifestyles, they're not as active as right. they used to be right. as a society. Right. Childhood obesity is a very common problem. Now, uh, Dr. Lidstone right. has a, a grant to work on childhood obesity in Baldwin County. And it's, it's a very serious problem. Yeah. And they say that children that are born today are actually not going to live as long as their parents. And right. Obesity is one of the things, the risk factors that it, that it causes because of that. And you're like me. When it was time for dinner, you, they probably had to make you That's come right. in. Didn't you? Your right. parents yeah. made you come in. That's right. <laughs> That's just, it was a different lifestyle. That's right, there. yeah. They rang a big bell. That's All right. the neighborhood kids would go back to their home when it was dinner time. That's so. right. <laughs> but, uh, but, but we are, uh, uh, boy, I tell you, talking about all this, and, and, and we're going to talk about the new Wellness and Recreation Center and, and, and give you the whole, uh, uh, the whole picture there. But uh, uh, we are, the whole center is revolved around wellness, right. just like you said, the way it was built, the, the, the way it's set up and everything. So, uh, but, but before we get to there, Let's maybe go back and just talk about our wellness program for our students, period. So when you got here, we had the depot, right. which was a smaller facility, uh, and a facility that had not too long before you got here, I believe we had, had just re renovated it or, or, or turned it over from an old train depot to a wellness right. center. So Yeah, I believe that was 2003 when okay. it was converted into the, the wellness depot. Right. And that was, the, I think, the same year that the university had, had adopted wellness as one of the cornerstones of the university. Right. So it was a concept that was real important back then, but not a lot was done with it until now, yeah. until more recently when we, we have the new wellness center. Right. You know, and I mentioned our students, you know, our students exercise more than the average college student mm -hmm. does. Um, we did the, uh, conducted the National College Health Assessment a couple of years ago and found that our, our folks are more avid exercisers. Uh, they need to eat more fruits and vegetables, right. uh, more participating in intramural activities here than the, the average college campus. About half of our students participate in intramurals. The national average is about only about 20%. Right. So we, our, our students are healthy and active yeah. and, and certainly involved in, in exercise. I agree with that. We have an extremely active campus. Uh, and if you don't believe it, just go to the wellness center every time and you'll see how active it is. I mean, so. We have 1,500 a day. <laughs> <laughs> or, or any of our uh, uh, intramural activities and right. from about 9 to midnight, it's absolutely it's packed. packed yeah. So. Yeah. Sure okay, we're going to come back with Dave Terrell. We're going to talk a little bit more, and we're going to go into the Wellness and Recreation Center and tell you all about, all about that on GC Conversations. This was a scary moment for Elliot Sadler and everyone at Richard Petty Motorsports. Thankfully, the folks at NASCAR have taken every precaution to ensure the safety of our drivers, and I hope you do the same thing when you get in your car. The Department of Transportation says that captured drivers are four times more likely to be in a serious accident. Buckle up. Watch the road and please do not text and drive. It could be the last text you ever sent. This message is brought to you by the U.S. Air Force. The traditional facelift surgery requires an incision be made along the hairline near the temple right. and then yes. goes around. Now the traditional facelift surgery, the traditional facelift surgery, the traditional... Miss Thompson, now the traditional facelift surgery requires an incision be made along the hairline. Anyone can wear a white coat, but not everyone is board certified in plastic surgery. Be safe. Be sure your doctor is a member of the American Society of Plastic Surgeons. Hello, welcome back to GC Conversations. I'm your host, Wendell State, along with Dave Terrell. We're talking all things wellness today. And, and Dave, when we left off, uh, uh, we were just talking about how active our students are. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I, I want to, uh, with this incredible new wellness center, I, I want to kind of give a little brief history from concept to moving in the building here in, in, uh, a little, in late 2011. So maybe probably about the time you got here, there was probably some talk about a new wellness center. Yeah, there was. There was a committee that was formed. Dr. Gangstead, I believe, chaired the committee. Uh, Mark Bowen, I think Tom Miles and Campus Life. Several people were involved and did a few site visits, went down to Georgia Southern right. and some other places to look and see what the other universities were doing. But that was really the first committee to get together to start making plans. And that was probably 2006, just right. a little bit before I got here. So that was, that was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. So it's been in the planning process for quite some time. Uh, so that committee did its work. It made its recommendations to administration. Uh, nothing moved too quickly at that point. 
then our previous president, Dr. Leland, appointed a, a wellness committee of representing all this, the student body and all the disciplines that would be involved with it. And uh, that committee broke out into three different subcommittees, employee wellness, student wellness, and the Wellness and Recreation Center. Mm -hmm. And of course, that was the, the, the big focus right, as far right, as was, right. the, was the center. Todd, your microphone dropped there. That's We're okay. All right. We're good. <laughs> it happens on live TV. <laughs> all right. Um, and um, once that committee was formed, really then things began to, to roll. Uh, we started doing some planning. We uh, hired some architects and designers to come in and give us some concepts of what we were looking at. We began the programming process, which is really space planning. How, many, how much space do we need for this activity or for that office or for the, for the gyms, the multi-court, right. that sort of thing. And uh, really spent about a year just in planning with regular meetings, trying to figure out exactly what we wanted in this place and what this Wellness and Recreation Center was to be. You know, our natatorium is a good example. It, as you know, we've talked about uh, having a, uh, an NCAA swim dive right. team down the road for, right. for Georgia College, and that hopefully will, will come to fruition. But that's why the natatorium is what it is. It's right. a competitive natatorium. It has spectator seating for 150 people. It's eight lanes, competitive, has the one meter, three meter springboard. It's ready to go right. for, for, for good competition. As a matter of fact, our swim caps are hosting a meet uh, right. this Saturday. Okay. Yeah. So there will be Georgia Southern, um, uh, Georgia Tech, I think University of Georgia, some right. schools from South Carolina will be coming to the Wellness Center right. for, for a meet that yeah. our own Swim Cats Swim Club will be will be hosting. Yeah. So they're excited about that. So anyway, just getting all the, the, the users involved, uh, the uh, past three SGA presidents were involved yeah. in our committee uh, when doing the planning. So it was really student focused and uh, well, you see what it is yeah. today. It's just a beautiful, well utilized facility and been open only three, four months. Yeah. yeah. And, and folks, most of you have seen it. If you haven't, it's worth a drive over. Uh, I'm sure folks you, uh, can, can you come in and, and call somebody and say, hey, can I at least take a tour around this Absolutely. place? Uh, but uh, 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 let's also talk about, before we really get into the facility components, let's talk about the wellness aspect because we talked about emotional wellness. And also, not, in addition to all the workout space, the physical mm -hmm. workout space, uh, our um, uh, health services are over there. Can right. Talk about we that? really wanted to take a holistic approach to this this wellness center, mm -hmm. um, and that's why the clinic is in there, and right. that's why counseling service is right. in there. It's, it's a mind, body, spirit kind of approach that we're taking. Again, a holistic approach to yeah. wellness, and and combining all these services that are interrelated to to some degree, um, and that's worked out worked out very right. well so yeah. far. That things are things are going well. So as a student, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm sick, I'm not feeling well, whatever, I, I go to the wellness center and there's a separate area. Right, uh, separate parking spot just for the students who need right. a clinic or counseling. Right, yeah, and, uh, uh, and, 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 and in addition to that, uh, certainly I have all this workout space that we're going we're gonna to now talk about. So let's yeah. kind of shift into that. Uh, tell me about the building. How big is it? Uh, uh, what all is in it? It's 100,000 square feet. Okay. It costs $29 million to build, and as the students know, they're paying for it right. through a, a new fee, $175 a semester beginning next semester, right. next year. Um, and that was the, the loan we got, so to speak, the, the bond that will be in place for 30 years. Right. So the building is technically paid for, right. going to be paid for. Sure. We, we can pay our mortgage sure. <laughs> as long yeah, as yeah. our student population <laughs> holds up. <laughs> um, it's one of the, the, the great features is a three-court uh, gymnasium, uh, two regular basketball courts. The other is, um, is a multi-purpose court. The floor is different. It's suitable for rollerblade hockey, and we have goals for indoor soccer. Uh, there's ultimate frisbee that was going on yeah. in there. All three courts are suitable for volleyball, basketball, and badminton. Mm -hmm. We've got uh, some, a small bleacher area, so when we get into the, the championship, uh, competitions right. which are going to be going on very soon over right. the next couple of weeks uh, so that a lot of the students can get in and, and check it out though um, I got to tell you I love the indoor court or the, uh, the one with the plexiglass around right it, the, the right. all-purpose court yeah. excuse me yeah. uh, volleyball or, or uh, uh, indoor soccer uh, uh, hockey on there uh, I just love that and I love the view that you can go on one end of it and watch right through the plexiglass right uh, I could, of course, watch over top as well, but it's a uh, it's a really really neat court, and 
and uh, a lot of fast action out there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we have a, a club sport hockey team okay. that does compete in, in other schools on when play ice hockey. Right. But obviously we don't have that. But yeah. but they use their rollerblades and the floor is suitable for that. And they've got their goals out there and the whole nine yards. So yeah. they're, they're certainly really we're really active with that. Uh, we've had a couple of times where uh, I think uh, this week our soccer team is going to need to come practice in there because their field is tied right. up with something and right. Centennial yeah. Center is tied up. Our basketball teams came in practice yeah. yesterday. Our sports teams are not the focus, obviously, right. because they have their own facilities, but when they're in a crunch, it's good yeah. to have that as a backup yeah. to, to come and use that. I know our soccer team had a community engagement activity where I had some uh, folks in from the community and were right. able to use the facility as well. Yeah, they did a children's clinic yeah. uh, on a Sunday afternoon, I right, believe yeah. it was, which was uh, real, real, real well received. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we've got the uh, uh, the the when you walk in, the, the, you see the the three courts that you're talking about, and uh, uh, but also when you walk in, I look to my right. And there's a climbing wall. There's a 29 foot high climbing wall, <laughs> uh, the, that, which is a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, our outdoor education department manages that wall for us because they are the experts when it comes to, to, to that okay. type of thing. So they manage that. We have a graduate assistant who is really in charge of it, and he has trained some supervisors and some other volunteers that, that help people learn how to do rock climbing yeah. and teach them how to belay and uh, teach them all the safety that goes along with it, having a lot of fun. Right, yeah, it, yeah. It is a lot of fun. Well, we're, 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 we're up against a break, so we're going to come back on our last segment and give you the whole rundown of the, the rest of the Wellness Center today on GC Conversations. What are your kids saving for? Purple eyeshadow and stock in a good mutual fund. New pants, new shoes, and a United States savings fund. I want stock in a Fortune 500 company. Help your kids save for their future and choose to save. From Maine to Maui, thousands of high school students across the country are getting in on the action by volunteering in their communities. It's great helping others, and it feels good too. Are you in? Whoa! Anyone can do it. All it takes is a little time. Are you in? Action teams of high school students are joining Volunteers of America and Major League Baseball players to help train and inspire the next generation of volunteers. It's easy to start an action team at your school, so you too can get in on the action. Are you in? Get in on the action at actionteam.org. Hello, welcome back to GC Conversations. Again, I'm your host, Wendell Staten, along with Dave Terrell, Director of our Wellness Programs here at Georgia College. And uh, Dave, we're talking about the, the, the climbing wall when you come in. Uh, I also want to talk about a neat feature of when you actually enter the facility uh, uh, to, to get in. It's, it's, it's something to do with my thumbprint, I believe. Yeah, it's a, it's a vein reader, actually. Okay. And, and if you go around to other colleges, almost all of them have some type of access control. They use, you either use hand geometry or a, a vein reader, okay. some type of device. It takes about seven seconds, six okay. or seven seconds for it to activate. But we, that system is tied into our banner and Bobcat card office okay. so that we know that when a person comes, they're actually one of our students. Right. So that helps us to control the access to the facility. Um, and academics really has the priority of use of the building. We right. have so the kinesiology department has a volleyball class, uh, some aerobics classes, mm -hmm. some weight training, a jogging activity course. Uh, so th when we reserve space, academics has priority. We are a university. Right. Uh, but the rest of the time, it's, you know, any group can schedule some spaces okay. and do some activities. Um, we do have one classroom for our academic programs. Any any type of program can have hold its classes out there. Yeah. Kinesiology certainly does a lot, particularly our exercise science majors. They do right. a practicum there, personal training, uh, yeah. our weight training area. Have a group fitness studio upstairs where we do Zumba, Pilates, yoga, all kinds of spinning, yeah. all sorts of aerobics classes. I have several classes a day and about 7,500 square feet of weight training okay. and, and cardiovascular equipment area. I think 64 pieces of cardio machines. Yeah. Um, they have TVs that are built into them, personal entertainment uh, screens. There's a program where you can uh, set to where it looks like you're walking or jogging outdoors yeah. and riding a bike up through the, the, 
the New England autumn leaves yeah. and uh, just lots of entertaining features to it. That's, it's state of the art stuff. It, that's it's one the best of my favorite available. features. I had that invention about 20 years ago. I just didn't patent it. Oh, oops. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't be sitting here today if you had. <laughs> but I also love you, you. You put your iPod in, your name comes up, and your right. playlist comes out. Absolutely. And, uh, I believe you can watch even television while yep. you're doing it. Yep. Yeah, and it's hooked up to the same cable system that we have here yeah. at the University. Yeah, which they could watch 80 this show. 80-something channel. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I'll go back and watch it this afternoon. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, now, also, a neat feature here of our of our of uh, uh, some of the exercise equipment is that it powers itself and puts power back in the building. Right. Is that correct? We have four of the elliptical machines that are hooked up to a system called ReRev. Okay. And the, the kinetic energy, the human energy that you're using while you're on that uh, – elliptical machine is you're generating power which right. is being converted and in returning electricity to the grid right so that's one of our green features sure but we are actually generating electricity with some of those machines and returning it to the electrical grid in, in town yeah, yeah so it's really really neat that, that, I love that concept and again going back to the whole wellness picture talking about that's, the way we built the building right even we're in the roof talk about the roof and the, the rain collection the roof is almost two acres mm -hmm. and it is sloped just so that it is piped out into a cistern which is buried under our front yard mm -hmm. and it holds 150,000 gallons of water okay. and that water will be used to irrigate all of the property around there so okay. that we don't have to use city water use right. pay for city water to right. irrigate our our landscaping yeah. of course all of our landscaping is uh, drought hardy and it's you know it plants that grow well in this area and don't require a lot of water to right. begin with but it's not going to cost us anything right. to yeah. keep it green to, yeah. to keep it like it is and there was hope at some point that we would generate enough water to water the softball and baseball right. fields as yeah. well so That's we right. don't have to use county water for that That's so right. hopefully we'll get to that point <laughs> at, at one time well we've had decent rain this year so we're off to a pretty good start yeah, yeah, so. we're, we're filling it up <laughs> <laughs> but there are a lot of green features yeah. to them you know uh, certainly energy saving light bulbs yeah. around uh, there's some of the lights that dim automatically as mm -hmm. the sun comes up for example um, just lots of green features to it. It's yeah. really big into recycling bins all over right. the building. And, yeah. um, so it's... Uh, and, and there's also, I want to kind of go now back to the natatorium. There's, in addition to the competition size pool, mm -hmm. uh, there's a, uh, what I would call a lazy river or, or right. a, uh, I'm not sure what it's termed. Yeah, we call it the leisure pool. Okay, leisure pool. Uh, it's okay. only three to three and a half feet deep. It's warmer water. It's about 88, 89 degrees. So it's sort of like a jacuzzi. And okay. as a matter of fact, we do have a bench that has 18 jets, and you can sit down there, and it's just like a jacuzzi. Oh, okay. Uh, and on the other side of it, it does have a little current. It's a lazy river kind right. of thing okay. that you can swim against or float around or do whatever, right. or whatever you yeah. want to. So that's, that's a fun and relaxing yeah. pool. And yeah. I know that our students are really enjoying that. Well, when you talk about these, the vein prints and the students enjoying it, what kind of uh, traffic are we seeing over there? 1,500 students a day. Wow. Yeah, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday are the busiest days, and okay. it goes off a little uh, after that. Right now, we're open till midnight because intramurals run so late. Okay, yeah. Open at 6 in the morning. Uh, have We're open seven days a week. There's yeah. some hours on Saturdays as well. We do have uh, limited community memberships okay. available also. For $50 a month, anybody in town can join. And what we're doing is actually enrolling them in a continuing education class. Gotcha. And that's how they're able to get in okay. into the wellness center as yeah. a community member. And also I want to, remember, to, to mention, speaking of community, uh, a cancer program that we're starting. It's called yes. Survive and Thrive. And it is a program of exercise and nutrition and mind, body, spirit kind of programming where uh, a physician will refer them to our program. We measure outcomes so that we can show some improvement. Really trying to improve quality of life, right. uh, addressing fatigue, nausea, depression, some of the side effects of cancer treatment. Right. So that program just started about a month ago. We already have, uh, I think, 10 people in okay. the program. And uh, it is it is going very, very well. So I started a program like this 10 years ago. Okay. So I'm, I'm familiar with it. Now, is this just for things. campus members on this? No, this is okay. anybody in town. Okay. Uh, anybody in our region. Okay. Uh, and uh, we're working with Georgia Cancer Specialists. We're over by Oconee Medical Center. Uh, and they're very helpful at getting referrals to us. We have the support of their doctors. And uh, it, it's a wonderful program okay. for people in our community that have cancer. And it's free. I've right. been writing grants to okay. help pay for that program so, uh, so that cancer survivors do not have to pay to come to the program. Gotcha. Okay. They right. have to be newly diagnosed and, uh, and under active primary treatment. Okay. That's the criteria for getting into the program. Survive and thrive. I love that That's name. That's it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and our, and our, our, our last uh, uh little section here uh talk to me a little bit about uh 
the, uh, uh, the, the the intramurals again because you know when we had Centennial hosted that most of the time, but we absolutely ran out of space. Yeah. And even now, we're, we're still, still using, using Centennial, Centennial because yeah. our our program continues to grow. Right. right. Yeah. But I don't know, 150 basketball teams this semester. I mean, just, just yeah. crazy, <laughs> wonderful number. It's great. It is. Uh, but right, basketball, dodgeball, water polo are all going on right now at the same time. Yeah. There's, there's some other activities, I'm sure. And uh, Bert Rosenberger and Drew do a great job of managing yeah. that program. So I'm going to have very, Bert very on to talk oh, about this, yeah, yeah. because it's, uh, we have one of the most phenomenal uh, intramural programs I've yeah. seen. Yeah. Uh, the yeah, act. Again, I, our students are so active, uh, and uh, uh, I'm so glad that we, we have, and, and when I see graduates come back, they look at the facility and go, oh, my goodness, yeah. this is incredible. So yeah. it's a great piece for our community, and uh, thank you for coming out and sharing, sure. it, sharing it with us today. Sure. Great. Have you been on that climbing wall yet, by the way? Uh, well, after my knee surgery okay, uh -huh. and rehabs, I will. <laughs> <laughs> because I do notice the floor has a lot of cushion in it. It is, yeah, really yeah. yeah. Just in so. case you slip a little bit. <laughs> right. Dave, thanks again for joining us. So, for Dave Terrell, I'm Wendell Staten. Thanks for joining us on GC Conversations.